Here's why, despite being a terrible show, The Acolyte should get a second season. I'm going to break all that down for you right now in my review of the first season of The Acolyte, specifically my review of the final episode, because a lot went down here. Now, as with everything that has happened in this series, there's been predominantly bad with the tinge of good. Now, there was more good in this episode than there has been for pretty much the entire season, um, especially across just one episode. But yeah, I'd say there was more good in this one episode than there was in any other episode and across the entire season, as I just said. So need, need to get into a bit of detail. There will be some spoilers here. It's unavoidable as it's the season finale and well, they do a lot of setting up, so but, but we'll get to that. So let, let's kind of bounce off between the good and the bad. Listen, <laughs> the Kyber Crystal turning red during the fight, that was awesome. I don't, I don't care if you're the angriest, most ardent anti-Disney person out there. The visual of seeing a blue Kyber Crystal being imbued with anger, fear and rage and hate turning red before our very eyes and then the lightsaber being drawn and going from blue and finishing off as red that was awesome it was absolutely awesome but this is still very much a visual cue and i'm on record on this very channel of saying that you can't be good just for being cool just for being visually striking you need some substance to it now the interesting thing is that, based on the narrative being told, did Osha have reason to get really angry with Sol here? I mean, yeah, Sol killed her mother. The problem, and this is going back to some of the previous stuff in the old episode, in, in the previous episodes, is that, well, the whole means by which we come to the point where Sol kills Osha and May's mother is weak as I discussed on the episode last week, which you can check out on the channel now. So, the thematic reasons for her turning bad work. The factual reasons of why we've got to this point, though they add up, they are weak. Um, and, I mean, ugh. speaking of weak, just while we're on the topic of this, of this lightsaber fight which culminates in, in the kyber crystal turning red, the fight between Kimir and Sol, while having some nice choreography, some, like I'm not going to hate on the choreography, the sword choreography was good, which genius in the editing room decided that this should be a slow-mo fight? Like, I'm sorry, I I is it just me, or does slow-mo used in such a in, in, in such an in-your-face capacity like it was here. Does it not feel a bit 20 years ago? Like, were we not watching The Matrix in 1999 going, this is cool? It's the year 2024 now, man. Like, slow-mo, because it's been, like, used to such a groundbreaking de degree 25 years ago, then overused, and then spoofed, you know, scary movie literally spoofs the use of slow-mo in action scenes. The very fact that slow-mo has somehow weaseled its way into Star Wars, it made what was essentially an okay to good fight feel really dated in its editing and in its execution. So massive, massive question mark over what, what the decision-making process was to use slow-mo. And there was one or two sword moments where if they were moving fast, I would have been like, okay, I can get why you're doing slow-mo here to emphasize the, 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 the minutia point of action of what's going on. But to have a whole fight almost using this method, I was like, uh, really? This, this doesn't feel... It, it felt very out of place in the Star Wars universe. Um, a, a, another thing, we're getting into detail here, but that space chase through, through the rings of Saturn, I mean, we'll talk about that in a moment because that was cool, but while we're on board the ship with Sol, why is Basil tearing his ship apart? Like, they, they, they just never explained it. He's chasing May. And just for reasons, Basil starts ripping the ship and sabotaging it. Why? Like, why? 
that there was zero reason for him to do that. Like, they, they, and they never answered it. Okay, well, that, that, okay, so why include it if it's not going to play out in a specific way? Um, I mean, okay, so, but let's actually talk about that space flight because I did, you know, sort of turn to my wife while that was going on and went, okay, I know this show isn't good, but that's cool. The the kind of an asteroid belt, I guess, like the rings of Saturn, although it's not Saturn, flying through a, a planet's ring. That visual, for me, it worked. I really, really liked it. it. We come again to the whole visual noise thing. Was there much substance to it? No. The visual of it was striking enough that it made me sit up and pay attention and go, I haven't seen that done often or at all if I if I really rack my brain. That's cool. Like, I don't like how we've got to this chase. As with everything with this damn show, it's like visual noise, visual noise. This visual noise was cool. Like, I can't take, I, I can't say otherwise. That chase through the, the planet rings, the, the, the asteroid belt was cool. It looked visually striking. Um... <sighs> Now I need to I need to jump to the end here. I need to jump to the end because we're post fight, and the twins have both left with Kimi. Smiler Ren, as some corners of the internet are calling him, ah uh, ah, uh, not funny. Just guys, really lame, really lame. We can we we can do better than Smiler Ren internet. Come on. Um, so we've got to the. It's come full circle. We're back at the Weeping Willow, which the twins spent a lot of the time at before things went down on Brendark. And for, and I mean, no reason, absolutely zero reason, we come to a point where the twins decide that they want to separate again. And Kimir says, I can wipe her mind. And, the, the, you know, the exchange for this is that Osha is now going to go with Kimir because she's kind of started her path down the dark side. She's got her red lightsaber. Osha is going to go with Kimir. And she's agreed to let him train her. And he's going to wipe May's mind so that they can't track her. Why don't they just all go together? Like, the way it played out, the actual reasoning for that was because, well, you need to have one of the girls with a partial to total memory loss to end up with the Jedi so that in future seasons we can have them being tracked down and coming back together again it's like okay so it's plot armor it's hashtag reasons but in the actual moment when they've both escaped the the ruins of the witch's coven and they've, they've run away to their weeping willow and they're back with Kamir. logically they could have all just left together i mean unless i'm missing something if, if i miss something astronomical there please do let me know down in the comments but what I saw was like, man, this is so unnecessary and you are literally just doing it because plot armor for hashtag reasons. Not good, man. Like, really poor writing. And so the, the show ends with Kimir and Osha standing on this mysterious planet, which I'll come to in a minute because I think I know what planet it is. But it stands with them hand in hand. So they've given him to desire now is the implication. So that's weird also. Um, unnecessary too. But yeah, they're going to, he's going to train her. And that's the dum 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 ominous music. And then we go back to Coruscant and it ends with a shot going, Master, sorry to disturb you. And it's Yoda. Now, I'm sure there's going to be people who are going to have sharper wits than I am who are going to say, this doesn't make sense because didn't they say in The Phantom Menace in earshot of Yoda, doesn't Ki Adi Mundi say, or is it Mace Windu who says, don't get mad on the details here, but don't correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't someone in that room say the Sith are extinct? Now, if Yoda's about during this time, which he's old enough, he should be about, but then he has seen that the Sith are not extinct. So this does break a continuity with the prequel trilogy. Or am I wrong? Like, let me know, but I'm I'm pretty sure that breaks that breaks chronology and continuity, which would be perfectly in keeping with the show, because it seems to seriously be lacking on narrative detail. But now here's bringing it all the way back to the top. Despite 
how trying to hide behind visual noise this episode was. And despite how that's a perfect reflection of the series as a whole. Like, this is not a good TV show. Why do I take the stance that we should get a season two? Here's why. Because something happens halfway through this episode. And I'm pretty sure... I am pretty sure we've seen Darth Plagueis. Now... (laughs) It's not been confirmed. They didn't say him in name. You just saw a hand. You saw the yellow eyes. And you saw that long face. If that's not Darth Plagueis, God damn it, that's his, that is his race. That, uh, Chisholm, I believe they're called. That is him. Like, it must be him. Surely. And so why a season two? Because what I believe the Acolyte is doing is setting up Plagueis... What I believe the Acolyte is doing is setting Plagueis up to do arguably the most important thing in Star Wars history. Create life out of the Force, and it appears the storyline of Osha and May is the key to that, along with the Virgins on their planet. That creation by their mother went a bit wrong given that it split their consciousness into two people. But I feel like the idea is probably that Plagueis eventually learned or acquired the power to do the same thing with Anakin, a pure virgin's birth, where he would eventually become the most important Jedi and Sith ever. Right now, this is of course just a theory, but the combination of sort of kind of, the sort of kind of confirmation that Plagueis is lurking and knowing at least to some extent how the twins were created sets up the situation, I think, perfectly for this to happen. But will it? That's the question, isn't it? It remains to be seen if the hyper-expensive, little-watched will uh, Acolyte will be renewed for season two. I don't personally think Disney care about cares about idiot YouTubers like me complaining about minutia details and you know, having some sort of perverse obsessiveness about Star Wars canon, and that extends even further into the toxicity that is that cesspit known as Twitter. Sorry, X. All that drama surrounding the show. But despite Disney not caring about that, it's a tall order for a season two, given the reported 180 million budget and the apparent fact it might be its least watched Disney Plus Star Wars show to date. Annoyingly, we're at a crossroads now. Because despite this being a terrible show, there was enough done without officially confirming Plagueis, but by knowing extra extended Star Wars canon, there is enough interesting stuff happening here that I think we do want to see a continuation of this story. In an ideal world with more accomplished writers and editors, Jesus, that would be welcomed. But don't get it twisted. I am not saying that just because I want a season two, that all of a sudden means that season one was great. That's why I want a season two. On the record, season one sucked. I have been hate watching it since episode three now. But, There are enough questions that have been raised for this last episode that make me think, I'll hate watch another eight just because I want to see how this Plagueis, maybe Darth Plagueis thing plays out. It would be a shame. In fact, you know what? It is a shame that Darth Plagueis' entry into official canon is in such a terrible show. Maybe it picks up in season two. That's a whisper in the wind, and I completely hear you if you say, now you're being a shill, this is completely unlikely. Yeah, it is completely unlikely. There's nothing in the show to merit a season two. It's a terrible show. And yet my interest has been piqued by the inclusion of Darth Plagueis. I can't help it. But I want to hear from you guys. Did, Did you think this was Darth Plagueis that we saw? Do you think... That was his planet. Do you think he is Kimir's master? Do you think we're going to get a season two of The Acolyte? Could it be that despite being such a terrible show, we get a season two? Leave your thoughts in your comments below. 
in a weird way, I am so glad that this is over because I don't need to review this crap anymore. <laughs> like, my Wednesday nights are free again. <laughs> Happy days. But that's it from me for now. There is a subscribe button there. There is another video for you to watch up here. So please do all that. Help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys on the next video. There's still a lot coming this week. So stay tuned. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.